Hey everyone, Matt here with Night Run Studio and in this video we are going to upgrade our game by adding some loot drops. We've already got damage pop-ups but now we're going to make it so that when we destroy an enemy they randomly spawn a different type of loot. You'll notice here that we're getting a lot of coins but these can also spawn hamburgers or coffees as well. And in the next video we'll hook this up to an inventory manager so that we can actually have it appearing in our UI. Let's get started. Alright, so first off, I'm just going to head over to my hierarchy where I'll create an empty game object called Loot. And then just going to drag a coin sprite over here on top of my enemy. Now in the hierarchy, I'll take a second to drag that coin and make it a child of Loot. This one's a little large, so I'm just going to quickly rescale it. Now the reason I made coin a child is because I always like to have my sprites and visuals kept separate from my parent object, which runs the physics and other logic. While I'm at it here, I'll just take a second to rename this as Sprite, as it won't always be a coin depending on which item this happens to be. All right, with that done, we're going to click on the Sprite itself and add an animation. If you haven't already opened your animation pane, you can do it by just going to Window, Animation, and then click Animation. At this point, we'll hit Create. I'm just going to head to my Animations folder here. You can create your own, and I'll call this Loot Animation. Now, if you haven't worked with animations before, essentially the way this works is that while clicked on our sprite, we can hit the record button, and any changes we make to the sprite will be recorded here on the timeline. I'm going to head to 30 frames, or half a second, and move the coin up, and you'll notice that some nodes appeared here with that change, as well as some at the beginning showing the initial position of the sprite. So now things are jumping up and down over half a second. Now before we go any further, I just want to show something that can really be a bane to people learning to use the animation window. If I click on my sprite, you'll notice that it has an X position value of 5 and a Y of negative 0.5. This is not good. That means that when my loot goes into the game and appears at the position of the robot, my sprite is actually going to appear 5 meters to the right and half a meter below. This is definitely not something we want. And this was just done automatically when I dragged the sprite into the game. So I'll just zero out those values on my sprite so that it appears exactly where the loot is. So now I can move my loot right on top of the robot, and my sprite, which is newly zeroed out, will also appear where it's supposed to. With that done, we can start recording. I'm actually going to head to 15 frames here, as I want this to be a little more snappy. I'll record it moving upward. I'm also going to make it grow as it rises, so we'll maybe add 0.2. So now as it goes up in the air, it gets larger. And then at this point, I want to create sort of an apex effect where it hovers a little bit. So we'll go five frames, have it up just a hair, down five frames more. We'll make it go down a little. And then we can have the actual drop. I want mine to drop faster than it rose, so we'll just give it 10 frames to drop all the way off the map. We can take a second to see how that looks. And I think that's all right. We can stop recording. And now we're ready to get scripting. So I'm just going to head to my project folder here, go into scripts, and we'll create a new C-sharp script. Let's just call this one loot drop. This script's job is going to be to keep track of all the things that make our loot different. So we'll need to know what the quantity is of loot being dropped at a given time. We're also going to need to know what loot is actually being dropped. And to do that, we're going to use an enumeration. I'm just going to head down below my entire script here. Here we'll just make a public enum called loot type, and you can just type in whatever types of loot you'd like to have. Don't forget a semicolon at the end. And with this enum, we've made this outside of our code because we want it to be publicly accessible to other scripts so that they can talk to it later. Now that we've declared the different types of loot that are available, we're actually going to make a line so that we can select what type of loot this one will be specifically. So this will be a public loot type. We'll just call it loot type with a lowercase. Now when you get in the game, you can click on your loot and add our loot drop. And you'll notice we've got a quantity spot as well as a slot with a drop down menu to pick what type of loot this will be. Now we'll return to that script in a moment, but for now let's make it so the enemy can actually drop this loot in the game. For me, this happens in my enemy health script, which is where the enemy is actually destroyed. This will look a little different depending on how your game is set up, but for me it's in my knockback delay section here. Right before I destroy the enemy, I want him to drop the loot. Now to make that happen, I'll need to head up to the top and create a public game object array just of loot. And this is where I can drag and drop all the items that I want my enemy to actually select from when he drops loot. So now we can pop down to where we want to actually drop the loot. We want to create a random number here. So we're going to use random.range, and then in brackets we put the numbers we want to roll between. So it'll be between zero, remember all arrays 
start with zero as their first item, and the loot to drop dot length. So this will just adjust depending on how many items are in your array. At that point, we can just instantiate one of the items based on that random number. So in here, we'll just put the item that we want to drop. Now we can't just put loot to drop, we need to actually pick one of the items from the array. Now if we put zero, it would spawn in item zero, but we'd never get that randomness. So instead, we're gonna put our random number in the square brackets. So it'll select the item from the array that matches our random role. Now we can just say where we want it to pop up, which in our case is just the transform position of the enemy himself. At this point, you might be noticing a little error here. That's because I needed to change my float to an integer. We don't want to have decimals. All right, the last argument here in instantiate is just our rotation, and we don't want any special rotation, so quaternion.identity. Now we'll roll a random number, instantiate loot based on that at the position of the robot, then destroy the robot. So at this point, to get things working, we really just need to create some prefabs. So I'm just going to take my loot here, and I'm going to rename this one to coin, as this will be our coin prefab. I'll then just drag it down into my prefab folder. At this point, we can create a couple more. So I'll right-click coin, go to prefab, and we will unpack this. I'll rename this one as coffee, make sure the loot type changes to coffee, and then just pick a different quantity for how many of these I'd like to drop. At this point, I can also change the sprite to match coffee. I'll make this one a prefab, and then we'll do the same thing for our other items. Now you may be noticing this isn't necessarily the most efficient way to create items, having to make a prefab for each individual one. And there definitely are more efficient ways to do this. That said, I'm trying to keep this tutorial as beginner friendly as possible. And doing this does help you to learn some important design concepts and it's also pretty functional. So now we can click on our actual robot enemy and in the loot to drop, just drag him whichever prefabs we want him to choose from when he gets destroyed. If you'd like to increase the chance of specific drops, just add more of that item in here and it will increase the chance. I can then click on overrides and apply all in order to make this change take effect for all my robots. At this point, things are more or less working properly. We roll a bunch of burgers here at the beginning, but it does randomize eventually. However, there are three problems. First, our animations are looping. Second, our items are remaining in the game forever. And finally, we're getting this out of range exception error for our array on the loot drops. So let's deal with those. First off, if you just go to your animations folder, we can find the animations for our loot. And all we need to do is unclick loop time. And that'll fix our first problem. The second problem is the items remaining in the game forever. Now earlier in this series, I created a self-destruct script, which we just need to put on each of our prefabs. We can then give them a destruct time, however long you want them to remain in the game. I'll do 0.6 since that's about how long the animation is. If you're new to this series, our self-destruct script just simply has a self-destruct time and a timer to count down. And when the timer gets below zero, it destroys the game object. Don't forget to apply this to all of your prefabs. Now the final error is just that out of range exception error. And this one actually is pretty simple as well. What's going on here is while things work great for our normal robot, the big robot has no loot in his loot to drop array. And all we need to do is simply put some items in there as right now, whenever it tries to roll for a random item, there's no items for it to choose from. At this point, what just remains is to actually have these items go into an inventory. That said, this video is already getting pretty long, so I'm going to save that one for the next video where we'll set up a user interface and have our items actually interact with it and update it. I'll see you in that next video. Until then, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.